You may have noticed that I haven't been updating as frequently as I was. In part, this is because I've taken on another big project, Honey Badger Radio. Honey Badger Radio is a group of women who don't blame men talking about men's rights, feminism, geek culture, and men's issues. I know from experience that women have a unique and vulnerability to criticism when it comes to men's rights, and this effect is exponentially greater with a group of women. I see Honey Badger Radio as a vanguard, breaking the ice around men's rights discussion and framing it as not just socially acceptable, but socially responsible. If you haven't already, please go and subscribe. Now, I can say that I'm busy, but the real reason that I haven't been updating is because I've reached an impasse in my research on gender dynamics. I've dug down deep enough on this issue that I've hit clay. I think that I've done all the theoretical excavation that I can. Anything further, and I'm taking this channel even deeper into the bedrock that underlies and goes beyond gender and men's rights. Having said that, I'm not abandoning this channel. Before I go on, let me tell you a bit about my history. My interest in men's issues started with the book, The Princess at the Window. At the time, I identified as a feminist because I felt that if women had the vote, they should also be subject to the draft. When I realized that this was not even anywhere near the list of important feminist issues, I felt betrayed by the movement. Feminism is obviously about what society can give women, not what women can give society. My own particular psychology rejected that role, the role of princess, damsel, and moral patient. I've never been interested in what I can get, but what I can do. Feminism offered me nothing to support my understanding of myself as an agent, my understanding of my responsibilities to men in society. All it offered was the endless cry of infancy. Not what I'm capable of, not what I am responsible for. No, what I am owed because I have a vagina and vaginas are always victims. I went on to read all of the men's rights books in the single shelf devoted to it, as compared to the half of floor given to feminism, in my university library as an undergrad. After that, around 2003, I started commenting at Usenet's men's rights. I didn't fully agree with the men's rights mission at that point. I was still somewhat blue pill. After Usenet's men's rights came Stand Your Ground. I was much more red pill at that point. At that time, the men's movement was also stagnant and heavily influenced by conservatism. After Stand Your Ground, I found Feminist Critics, which was the only non-conservative anti-feminist blog at the time. Great discussions were had, and I still highly recommend Feminist Critics from, for some very well-researched articles on, on uh, gender issues. After Feminist Critics, I launched my own blog, Gender Attic and also published some pieces of the Good Men Project and, of course, A Voice for Men. That brings us to early 2012. At that time, the Southern Poverty Law Center appeared to label the men's rights movement as a hate movement. They then retracted their apparent proclamation, allowing them to absolve themselves of all possible repercussions while enabling the accusation or non-accusation or whatever it was to cast a pall over the men's rights movement. At the time, this poll caused several men, including one I know in real life, to consider suicide. The men's rights movement has been the only place where a lot of men have felt heard. When the SPLC sort of somewhat maybe declared it a hate movement, many men lost all hope. And that's when I decided to take on the label of men's rights activist. I've never really liked labels. I've never really liked applying them to myself. Mostly because you either get painted by the label or you have to live up to something within the label and I prefer to see myself as a free agent. But at that point I decided if the powers that be are going to refer to MRAs as hateful vermin then they can damn well call me hateful vermin alongside them. It's easy for these people to hurt a group comprised entirely of men. Much harder when there are women in it. Such is the moral bankruptcy of these people. They have no problem calling a group of men who have nowhere else to turn every horrible name in the book, but add one woman in and suddenly it becomes a thing. That brings us up to April 2013 and Earl Silverman's suicide. His birthday was yesterday, by the way. He would have been 64. Two years older than my father. For those of you who don't know, Earl Silverman ran the only men's shelter in all of Canada. 
Unfortunately, he had to shut his shelter down after 20 years of trying to get the government to fund it and failing. So he shut his shelter down, and then he hung himself. Up till April of 2013, I had kept my men's rights-related work anonymous behind a pseudonym. I'm an artist and a wannabe author, and I hoped that I could make a name for myself in both fields. Unfortunately, those fields are dominated by feminists, and opposing the party line is career suicide. After Earl died, I decided I would tie my, my future to the men's rights movement. In other words, if they didn't succeed, I wouldn't succeed. And how do I explain this? After Earl died, I made a conscious decision to put away my concerns about my own success. And I decided that I didn't want to succeed in a world where compassion for men is considered hate. I decided I would help the men's rights movement wherever I was capable of, and that I would put my own skin in the game if I was asked. So when A Voice for Men needed help with its editorial duties in June, I pitched in. When Men's Rights Edmonton needed assistance for its promotional material for the Patriarchy Party, I did that too. When an individual in Saskatoon said that they wanted a men's rights group, I did the work to organize one. And when I was asked to talk to the media about men's rights using my real name, I did that, both in print and even more irreversibly on television. Truth be told, I never wanted to be known for men's rights work at all. But I decided I wouldn't make choices based on my insecurities and fears. I would, instead, I'd make choices based on what's right. I take the history of the Janissaries as a cautionary tale for men in this era. The Janissaries, the sons of Christian slaves, brainwashed to serve the Ottoman Empire, were heralded as heroes when they were useful to the Empire, but the moment the Empire decided the Janissaries were no longer needed, and that they would prefer Turks to occupy those roles formerly occupied by the Janissaries, a threat narrative was directed at the Janissaries, and eventually every Janissary who didn't flee or hide was slaughtered. This is the ultimate fate of any group defined by benefit to another. Their usefulness will cease, and the people they serve will suddenly decide that their former heroes are villains. Sometimes they're spared. Sometimes they're slaughtered. But this is the end game of being defined by your utility. A hero is another word for servant, and when servants cease to be useful, they become liabilities. Liabilities are another word for vulnerabilities, and people who create vulnerabilities for their masters are bad servants. And bad servants are villains. The problem isn't feminism. Feminism is merely a final step in the inevitable life cycle from useful, hero, to useless, to villain. Now let me go back to the future of this channel. In the beginning of this, I said I've hit theoretical clay, and I think for the most part I have. That doesn't mean this channel ends, it means it changes. And I'm going to need your help to do it. Up to this point, I've essentially tried to get these ideas out as quickly as possible just to manifest them in some form. In the process, I've sacrificed production values and even coherency. So I'm asking you, the people who've taken this journey with me, to tell me what doesn't make sense, what needs more explanation, and what seems just wrong. I also want you to take these ideas and make them your own. As for me, my uploads are going to remain infrequent, but with your help, hopefully more accessible and definitely more polished. <laughs> We're going places with our little ragtag group of misfits, and I intend to help pave the way. Future's so bright gonna have to wear shades.